Greetings, happy coders. Welcome to another video. I've been quite busy recently. Real life stuff as well. Uh, coding, working on the pyramid, and um, been working on the enemy graphics. Now, um, I use a different range of tools for this, and I also, of course, work with my good friend Andy, Andy Johns, who uses different tools as well. And often we find that we're moving data from one set to another, one graphics package to another, um, and then converting it into data, source code, and so on. And um, there isn't really a particular package that, that suits the workflow. And I think that slows things down. And um, I've been meaning to sort of uh, write my own package, uh, extend the work that I did on Jonathan Caldwell's AGD, which was called AGDX, which had a more enhanced version of the sprite editor but it was still limited because of the amount of memory because obviously you've got the game in there as well so um i thought it'd be nice to develop my own sprite editor kind of base it on the original um from agd but but then add to it so people would still have some familiarity um, and then add the kind of import and export tools and animation tools and various things like this. So this is a work in progress. I decided to spite the bullet and go for it. And um, I thought I'd show you where I'm at, really. So the idea then is that um, I'll just boot that up, so to speak, load it up. So the idea is that the top 16K of memory is going to be where the editing area is. And then the, the you know, the data, the sprite data. And then the lower part will be for the editor. So that gives me a good sort of 32K or so to work with for an editor, which I think should be fine for the spectrum. Um, and then there's always the option of using additional banks. If I save the top 16K, um, then for 1 to 8K, I can expand it, right? So the, there can be more sprite banks. So the idea really is that you're working with not really uh, sprite groups as you would in AGD. This is just purely a block of memory. You've got like 4K in each bank and within that 4K you can obviously create the sprites and then export them. So each bank is given a particular sprite size. In this case so far we've got 16 by 16, 24, 24, 32, 32. I plan eventually to um, add other ranges, perhaps 8 by 8, perhaps 16 by 8, different things like this. So um, it's quite common when you're coding that you put sprite sizes. If you've got different sizes, you store them in the similar sort of areas. So it's an easy way to work with them, obviously, and copy and paste and manage the data. So um, without further ado, I suppose, let's take a look. I'm going to create a bank now, which will be 4K, and it will be 16 by 16, right? So I just start like this. And you can see it looks quite similar to the AGD editor, although that's really the front end, the, the under the hood it's uh, all completely new really. The scale is different for a start. This is a 16 by 16 and it's half the size to allow for larger um, sprites like 32 by 32 and so on. But it's pretty easy for me to just add um, you know, some sort of a basic sprite like this. Now I'm working with Spectaculator. It does support Kempston Mouse so I can click into this you see I've got the mouse here, and uh, I can use the mouse, it's pretty intuitive, it's not bad at all, to add or remove, right click, left click, just like that, redraw, draw it back in. I can also lock the mouse to uh, vertical or horizontal, so there I've got it locked vertical, here I've got it locked horizontally, right, so I can draw lines, bits and pieces like this. The uh, mouse is actually pretty handy, you know, for sort of filling stuff in and so on. So that's all great. Um, now I'll show you the rest of the functions, but obviously not with this rubbishy little uh, drawing here. Um, so a really important thing, if, especially, you know, working with uh, Spectrum here, um, you want to be able to be able to input and output, ex import and export, let's say, right? So. Right now, I've only got one import option, but I will expand on that. But I can basically import a 4K bank from a screenshot, right? So um, I just click a key here, and it says load screen data, press space to confirm. And this is the one that we've been using for our um, 
sorry, just bear with me, there we go. This one we've been using for the pyramid, and there's 128 sprites in there. And if I just press space, that's paused, sorry. There we go, All right? So you can see there, very quick and easy. If I had that screenshot, which I can see, I can view it here, right? There, that is, can be done in um, ZX Paintbrush, for example. Eventually, I'm going to add an option to sort of grab a piece of the screen, a little bit like in AGD, but we'll have a range selector at the bottom so you can um, grab ranges of sprites as well. That's that. Now you can see there, there's a little sneak peek at some of the graphics we've been working on. Um, and it's got most of the editing options you would expect, so I can rotate and uh, I can flip it vertically and horizontally. Uh, I can shift it left and right, up and down. It's the usual things. And then there's a clipboard. If you're wondering what these windows are for, I'll tell you what those are for now. So this one obviously is the draw preview window. It's the regular size. This one is the uh, clipboard. So if I've got something in the clipboard, it'll show me what's in there, which is handy. That would allow me to also potentially merge the current image with the clipboard so that would be quite a nice um, feature and then over here we've got a range select and I haven't decided exactly where this goes yet so when you're developing things quite often you get them working first and then you um, decide where everything fits because you don't always know exactly what you're going to add but this is a range selector and it works independently of the um, image editor so what what I mean by that is that I can set this up, set the range of any any range from within this selection. So for example, if I want to work with this one, I can set my first range to be this one here. So we'll start by doing that. So that's uh, set at frame nine, and then I'll just go using the the end option there. I can set that to frame eleven. So what you'll see now is that that will stay the same even though even though I'm browsing other sprites. So that allows me to move, for example, to copy and paste or whatever else I might want to do with the editor to and um, but then keep my selection there. Okay? So that's and this is basically an animation preview. So you can see 9 to 11 here and I can just press play and I can see my little animation there playing and if I want I can either have it like as a loop so it'll be 9 10 11 and then back to 9 or I can make it ping so that's now 9 10 11 10 9 so to speak and uh, I can look at that at a faster speed like this that's 50 Hertz so that's 25 Hertz and that's 12 right so you can basically play about with that and see how you want it to work Okay, and then obviously with that, when I'm doing that, I can actually have it playing and I can edit it sort of live because that's independent. I can move from another. So if I wanted the eyes to be different, you can see there, and I can still browse and still work on that frame. If I wanted the eyes to flash, then I can just you know turn that off. If you keep your eye on this this one, you'll see that that's changing on the fly, right? So. Yeah, if I wanted the eyes to sort of move, something like that. Make the head move over like this, maybe. Right, just add that like this. Maybe make a small adjustment to that. And yeah, there you go, see, so there's the head moving left and right. It's kind of fun, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, yeah, so that's easy to play about with, but obviously that wouldn't be much use if you couldn't export it, right? So um, if we look in the options in uh, Spectaculator, which I don't think is going to come up on here, but on the frame here, but if you, in the communication port option, if you go to options in Spectaculator and choose the RS-232 port, set it to clipboard then you can output to via the emulated serial port right so i'll show you how that works um i'll just bring up notepad uh, wordpad here just for a minute 
There we go, still using WordPad even though it's no longer uh, available, is it? It's not, not being used anymore. But anyway, discontinued I think is the word, <laughs> much like the spectrum. So anyway, let's say I want to output that data, right? Well, it's a pretty straightforward thing. I just press Control X like that and that has copied those three frames directly into the Windows clipboard in um, the format that I've chosen which is um, assembly right so if I now paste it you'll see there I've got the uh, data sorry about that noise there's the data and um, you can see that it is uh, it outputs it perfectly there so that's a really easy way that you can just work on the graphics and you don't even need to save a file. You literally just press copy, go to your editor and paste and your data is immediately available like that. And you can just edit it, copy, paste. It's uh, seamless really. All right, so that's that. We'll take a quick look at the other banks. I've got another bank here. That's 24 by 24, All right? So that's that one. And again, we can animate that if we want. Let's take a look at that. And I've also got this one, which is, uh, if I do that again, there you can see um, this was a, a graphic I did a few years ago for Sinistar. Might someday do Sinistar, you never know. It's a great game and well worth uh, converting, I think. Although difficult to get the full atmosphere from the game with the speech and everything, obviously, on the spectrum. But it uh, would be fun, wouldn't it? So, yeah, there you go. You can see it supports. 32 by 32, everything, including rotation, including uh, vertical flip, horizontal flip. Um, let me just see. It also, that was a single line shift as well. That's also possible. Right? You can see I can shift single lines uh, like that. It works with vertical as well, but I'm not sure that it's fully tested. So I don't know. Maybe no, that's not fully working yet. Anyway work in progress isn't it always so yeah easy to output I can again just a quick demo right so if you've got a lot of data obviously this is working on an emulated chip of three and a half megahertz so if it's got a lot of data it might be a bit slow but you can just speed up the um, emulation so that's an option let's see if that one is now output we should get some sinister graphics here and there you can see that's a full-sized uh, 128 bytes sprites which are yeah right so with each bank depends on the size of the sprite obviously you can get 32 if you were using um, 120 uh, sorry if you're using 32 by 32 then you can get 32 sprites 16 is 1 to 7 that's an empty bank there and 56 sprites available if you're on 24 by 24. I may well add those in the future. So um, obviously this is one of the tools that we use. Um, I may well release a free version of this. Right now it's available to my supporters on Patreon. If you don't know about that, you can support my work there. It's uh, patreon.com slash happycodingzx. You will get a full set of all of the work and the games I've been involved in. Uh, as part of that deal, it's about 20 odd games, I think. Animation editor is going a bit mental there. Need to fix that bug. Um, yeah, so you get a full range of that, and then you get access to uh, some of these tools as well. If you're a if you're a specy developer and you're perhaps releasing a game with us via Midnight Brew, then obviously I would share all of these tools as well because it's a great way of um, collaborating too. So that's how Andy and I are going to be working on these. And um, yeah, so if you've got any thoughts on that, any suggestions, whatever, it's always welcome. Um, I think we're pretty much done. I've covered most things. You can, I'll do more videos on this. And uh, in the meantime, I can hear my cat whimpering. I don't know if she's going to come over. I don't think she is. Anyway, let's leave it there. Um, and uh, take care of yourselves. And as always, happy coding. Bye-bye.